Hi everyone, and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to create dynamic row numbers in Excel. We're going to cover two methods. One which uses the row function, which is compatible with earlier versions of Excel, and one which uses the sequence function, which is a bit more versatile. The purpose behind the first method is to ensure the row numbers stay in the correct order even when we delete a row. Let me demonstrate how most people would set up row numbers. We'd have the number one, and then we would add one to the number one, and drag this down like this. However, if we delete a row, for example this one, you can see that the order is no longer accurate and we get a bunch of errors. To prevent this from happening, we're going to use the row function. So let's get rid of these values here. And what we want to do is we want to take the row of the active cell and subtract a row above it, which will remain fixed. So let me demonstrate. In cell B3, we want to show the number one. Instead of typing the number one, we want to make this dynamic. So we type equals row. When we click enter, you can see this returns the number three. We want it to return the number one. So we subtract the row number of the cell above it and click enter. However, if we drag this formula down, it gives us the number one for each cell, which is incorrect. This is because for cell B4, for example, it's taking the row of cell B4, which is 4, and subtracting the row of the cell above, which is 3. We can overcome this by using absolute references. We'll go to cell B3 and add absolute references around the cell above to ensure this remains static as we drag the formula down. Now, when we drag the formula down, you can see that the order is correct. This time, if we delete a row, the cell numbering updates correctly. Previously, it would have shown error signs, which is not ideal. Let's now cover the second method, the sequence method. Here, we'll use the sequence function, which, as the name suggests, returns a sequence of numbers. We're going to combine this with the count a function, which counts the number of non-empty cells in an array. We type equals sequence, followed by count a, and then we'll make the row numbers dynamic based on the number of students in our range. So we'll select C3 to C12. We can then close brackets twice and click enter. Now, when we add students to our list, you can see that the row numbers update dynamically. Equally, if we were to delete a row, you can see that it adjusts appropriately as well. So those are two methods to apply dynamic row numbers in Excel. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.